Thank you for making the most popular choice to be with us on Weekend Deal on the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. Perhaps you've already had something light this morning. Perhaps you'll be eating later again at noon, in the afternoon, and in the evening. And that's because uh, farmers have been planting from April till October. And then when it's time to harvest the crops, and then there's food for everyone. What if you were told that there are some factors that if left unchecked, will negatively impact not just food production, but its distribution and purchase? Of course, you invite your family and friends to join us on Weekend Deal so they can get all the information firsthand. We urge you to do just that as we take off talking about food security in Nigeria. Many may say that Nigeria is invulnerable to food insecurity, but research and investigation show that there may be some factors that mitigate against food security. And that's how Francis sets the tone for the conversation with our background, giving us information that we can tackle in the course of the program. Food security has become an issue of global concern in recent times. And Nigeria, with a huge endowed natural and human resources, is not spared. Nigeria's population is growing at 2.6% annually, but its food production is not following the same pattern, causing rise in crop prices and fears of food insecurity among the people. We are not producing enough. We are talking of 200, over 200 million people that must be fed. They must have three square meal and if you look at how many percent of our land our arable land that we cultivate it will not be more than 20 to 30 percent of our arable land we must mechanize and that is why there's so much dependent on importation of food when we have arable lands we have everything in this country that will have grow our Food. I know how my mothers, my parents, all people, I know how they struggle, they farm, even the yam and cassava, everything, maize, everything. I know how good they were. Food insecurity in Nigeria is continuously being aggravated by different factors, including criminal conflicts and most recently the COVID 19 pandemic. The presence of militant groups like Boko Haram, in addition to violent clashes between herders and farmers, has further compounded the problem. The question is, what drive people? Where do they recruit people into terrorism, into bandits, into Boko Haram, you call? It's the same Nigerian that have been recruited. Why do we allow those sector to be more lucrative than the agriculture we are talking about. As bandits continue to attack communities, many farmers have fled their farms and have vowed never to return until security is beefed up around them. But what about other areas that are not confronted with such challenges? Are people still farming? If you don't have insurgency, you have kidnappers. If you don't have kidnappers, you have agitators. The country is overwhelmed. But we cannot be blaming government, government, government. As individual, what are we doing? People in the East, they are farming still, they are being troubled. People in the South, the, the Southwest, they are farming, they are being troubled. The people are afraid. Farmers are afraid. So it's not only not. 
As a way of addressing the challenges confronting the agricultural sector, President Mohamed Buhari has rolled out different initiatives such as the Anchor Borrowers Program, the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative, Youth Farm Lab, Presidential Economic Diversification Initiative, and the Food Security Council to guarantee food security for all. Buhari has tried. He has brought every, every, poly, every means of which to promote agriculture. I'll blame the implementers. If you go to Angkor Borua, you look at how do they distribute the credits. In bringing collateral, you have to bring a house in the cities. How many people can access those funds? And then ban exportation of raw material from now. When you ban exportation of raw materials, all our agricultural products must be processed in Nigeria before we export it. In recent years, there has been growing interest to strengthen and intensify local food production in order to mitigate the adverse effects of global food shocks and increase in food prices. Consequently, there is much attention towards home gardening as a strategy to enhance household food security and nutrition. Our urban planning does not take that into consideration. When you give somebody just 200 square meters, where will you put the garden? And secondly, we must orientate our mind that we must grow what we eat and we must eat what we grow. We must reorientate our mind to look at those food we import thinking they are the best. They spend years. They are not fresh. But God has given us green fresh because i see no reason why we are importing tomato when we can plant it at our backyard okra can be planted in our backyard so if everybody has that in the backyard importation will stop with the continuous clashes between farmers and criminal headsmen alternative sources for food production have been sought and one of such is greenhouse farming which is becoming very popular in nigeria we must look at our environment. Greenhouse farming. Are they in conformity with our own environment? We don't just import anything. We look at our environment. I don't think our environment is... Uh, because I've gone to a lot of greenhouse and I've not seen it. 70% are not working. All these greenhouse and co are better in those eyes country that doesn't have land. I saw the, the green farmhouse we are talking about, where they put the uh, polythene bags, they put bags, they put uh, this is, they line it up. We don't have it much here. But it's good. And our people need to be taught about it and encourage them to start doing it. Our focus on Weekend Deal today will be on food security in Nigeria. Weekend Deal! Thank you, Francis. We must eat so we can live. And we have been advised to grow all what we need to eat. The land is there. The federal government has provided grants at so many levels. And uh, someone is telling us that it's those who implement these policies who create a challenge or several bottlenecks. Now, let's talk about rural urban migration and how it impacts not just agriculture, but the final outcomes in terms of products, produce, and cost at purchase level. NTR Abuja examines this. Food is something that provides nutrients, and nutrients are substances that provide energy for activity, growth, and all functions that aids the formation of the body. The importance of food to a nation cannot be overemphasized because it is the third most important thing for living things to provide energy and development, maintain life or stimulate growth after air and water. Nigeria is a country that is known for agricultural activities, which also plays a dominant role in the national development. It is commonly said that agriculture contributes the highest gross domestic product in Nigeria's economy, as well as having the largest intake of employees who make ends meet in the occupation. Our major occupation in Nigeria is mainly predominantly agriculture. And that's why you see, you can see further that, that there are still food, despite the fact that it's sort of, uh, it's not an abundance. 
for 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 consumption because the initiative is farming from day one so everybody is conscious of going to the farm at least for if not for commercial purpose at least for for sustain sustainability of his family and that's where we find ourselves today the the government in other words has uh as a put enlightenment to it that there should be surplus of food especially this very government this is say we should go back to uh, uh agriculture you can see a civil servant gone at the days we don't go into uh, uh, into, uh, into agri we only go into civil servant everybody will do. but now everybody no matter how you at your backyard you have a small yam or a small plot of place that whereby you plus you, you put something on the ground where by the end of the day you harvest it it may be small it may be little yes at least it has input improve sufficiency of the food in this country. Despite the wonderful contributions agriculture has made, the sector has been threatened by insecurity arising from headers and farmers clash. As a result of this conflict, many farmers have abandoned the farmland to other sources of livelihood, hereby creating a vacuum in the cultivation and production of food that will feed the nation. One other factor that has affected food security in the country is rural urban migration, especially among the youth. Many farmlands are now lying fallow due to no one wanting to cultivate it for food production. Some have attributed the cost to hoarding of this product and produces, while others believe it is a global situation that goes beyond the reach of the Nigerian people. Whatever might be the cause of food insecurity in Nigeria, the fact remains that its citizens are groaning under this financial hardship. We also go to the market to buy stuffs. Of late now, we've, we've, we've experienced increase in food prices. I guess it's the part is from the farmers and people that, we don't know, there's insecurity everywhere. So people are afraid to go to the farm. Some of these schemes from government are actually boosting agricultural production. Government has set up a lot of money to support agriculture and most of these farmers are residing in a remote areas, in villages, where they don't even have electricity, they don't even have network. Some of us will have to use uh, pumping machine, irrigation machines and the other machinery input of the agriculture. That's a place that tractor will not enter. We need this uh, power tiller machine. Having a concerted effort in delivering loans and other agricultural inputs to rural farmers will be the magic wand that will end food insecurity in the country. Thank you, Jacqueline, from uh, NT Abuja. We all have a role to play. We can start to farm vegetables, tomatoes, for example, okra, in our homes and that way we can be sure that when it comes to some food items we are secured all hands must be on deck to ensure that we continue to have food for everyone in nigeria what about the prices some have voiced their opinion that prices of food products and other edibles are on the rise from ibado in your state we get first-hand information with this market survey it is an indisputable fact that there is a symbiotic relationship between agriculture, natural transformation and economic development in view of the role of agriculture in the provision of food. Food is the third most important thing for human beings after air and water. It provides energy and development, maintain life and stimulate growth. In fact, it is one of the most complicated sets of chemicals. Food plays an important role in the promotion of health and disease prevention, and its importance is obvious and essential. The federal government, through its various programs and plans, have made concerted efforts at boosting agricultural production towards ensuring the country is self-sufficient and ensuring food security. However, in recent times, the prices of foodstuffs have soared beyond the reach of the average Nigerian, with prices of commodities doubling. A bag of garida we used to buy for like 10,000 before, is now, now goes for like 34,000 per bag. The beans that we used to sell for like 12,000, 9,000, 8,000, now go for 42,000. 
can you imagine someone that cannot afford to 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 get uh, two thousand or twenty thousand naira in a month? How can such a person feed his or her family? A carton of uh, Gino sachet that was being sold for two thousand two hundred naira uh, as at January is at uh, three thousand eight hundred naira now. Several factors have been attributed to the cost of food crisis in Nigeria. Uh, last year, we have triple crisis, all in one. The first one is COVID-19. The second challenge, which is the major one, was the weather. The weather was really, really bad last year. And uh, the last one was the S-Men, the security issue. That really affect a lot of farmers. They lost their revenue. And uh, at the end of the day, there is a terrible shortage on food production in the country last year. How affordable is food stuff to an average Ibadan resident? Things are expensive now in the market. We cannot afford it any longer. If we buy something worth of 100,000 naira today from the market, by the next day, it would have returned to 150,000 naira. I'm a caterer by profession and it's really affecting my business. Most of the time, when I get jobs, customers, they give, uh, they, we give them quotation, but by the time we get to the market, the following week, the price of things will have gone a bit higher, the following week again, higher, and it keeps going. Despite the federal government intervention at drawing people into farming to boost agricultural production, are people still farming? We, as a, I mean, as the apex body of all farmers' association, we've gone as far as uh, uh, getting farmers to have uh, uh, what we call cluster of farmland throughout the state. We've gathered more than 10,000 farmers and they've secured, uh, I mean, more than enough uh, land for them to cultivate, but we have disappointment of funding. It is, however, hoped that if the government at the local, state and federal level intensifies security, farmers will go back to the farms and food will be sufficient for all Nigerians. Thank you. For Menti Badon, we learned that um, their challenge is funding and that COVID-19, rearing its face in Nigeria, impacted negatively on farming and the output. Earlier on, we heard that uh, the policies are there, the grants are there, but those who implement them sometimes create challenges and bottlenecks that can frustrate the process. I'll take a quick message now before we go to Sokoto to guarantee adequate food security in Nigeria. Our government must ensure life security so that farmers can continue to go to their farms and provide food for the nation. Akinola Ololade from Ilori, Kwara State. Thank you for your contribution. Our program is interactive. Send in your messages and that we can continue to share the information. Some factors can affect farming, agriculture, harvest, negatively and positive. We know that uh, we must have rainfall for our plants to grow. From Sokoto, we learn more about the process. The issue of climate change is of concern to farmers globally, worrisome even to the peasants in Sokoto State like Malam Bandadu. Flooding came to Bandadu as a shock last year. He now resorts to harvesting crops prematurely to avoid total loss. Mm. Rainfall sets slate in Sokoto State and seizes early, and such uncertainties make proper planning difficult for farmers. When you look at the uh, spread of rainfall in Sokoto State, it's in most cases irregular. Uh, they plan that they will have best before rainfall. You see, all of a sudden, when the is is heading, it's when the rice is heading, you see the flood will come and. Uh, uh, 
flood everything. Marlon Bandado, like most other farmers, is not taking any chance this year. Although premature harvest accounts for low crop production, this is, however, the least of many reasons for food insecurity in Nigeria. Other factors, I think, have to do with uh, the level of technology we are in. This time of year in Sokoto State, crops such as pepper and tomatoes are in different stages of production. Their availability in the market, therefore, depends on supply from other states and this affects recent prices. The price of onion as at that time was 12,000 naira and some 11,000 to 13. But I'm, as I'm speaking to you now, a bag of onion is being sold around 22,000, 23 here in Sokoto. In Nigeria, Sokoto State is one of the leading states in onion production, but the onion value chain has witnessed setback recently as a result of fire outbreak. Of course, there is shortage of onion as a result of that fire in Fano. We lost about 200,000 bags of onion worth about 1.2 billion naira. So when you put that aside and with what we are left, of course it has affected the price of onion. The current rise in the cost of food items can also be associated with the type of agricultural practice. In Sokoto State, for instance, peasant farmers that engage in crop production are low-income earners who still use simple implements in production and this accounts for low output yearly. When you adopt a recommended scientific way of production, you produce more. But when you, well, we are not discouraging actually primitive, well, sorry, traditional. But when you identify newly introduced or modern system is far superior than what you used to, grate it with your traditional so that there will be uh, actually improvement in the production system. Onion subsector alone, it is enough for Sokoto to reduce unemployment to the barest minimum. We have this thing with, we have, we have companies, Nestle, Unilever, Dolphy, they need onion powder to be able to produce some of their product. So why can't we just think out of the bus, invest in this value chain, take a lot of youth out of um, the, on, um, uh, the, the, the streets and provide them job. Sokoto and many states in Nigeria have potential to ensure food security when deliberate efforts are put into place to address challenges on agriculture. From Sokoto, we get information about requirements of positive financial impact on the value chain so that young people can return to the farms with modern farming equipment. Let's also talk about natural disaster, which has affected the quality and quantity of the product. We'll be joining Dayola in a minute, but I'll just take one message that has reached us from Justin. Justin says Nigeria is blessed with good soil for cultivation and we always have rain. The government should do all it can to fix the insecurity problem in Nigeria. Nigeria has the capacity to be the richest country in the world in terms of food production if we step up our agricultural practices. Interesting. Dayola has been examining factors that can work against food provision. She's talking about transportation, poor access road, as well as poor quality of roads. Dayo, tell us more, please. What is happening before 
we are for this team, this team is many places but because of the security security issue some farmers they are not the uh, palm the tomatoes and others sometimes police soldier if you carry the tomato from casino or from zaria before you are coming here only soldier police bio sometimes they are collecting like for 1j5 they are collecting like 15,000, 12,000. Now, when we are going to bulk of Illinois state to bring tomato here, only the revenue in the bulk, before you are leaving the market, can spend like 25,000. Again, any jet, when you are coming, 500 naira, police, soldier, BIO, and run something. Every jet is 500 naira when you are rich. So, you know, all of this thing, we are taking it, putting up top of our, the goose where we are carrying. So that's why I just, you see, when the tomato coming here, or onion or something like that, just the price is going up. Lack of good road. There's problem of insecurity. Then there's a problem of security. That is, like, many of police officers and the BIO and uh, road safety, they are collecting more money for us. This is a big problem that we are facing in the road. Then another problem is there is many government that are created the person who collect money for us, like sticker and revenue collector. They are affecting the price of transportation. Price of petrol, price of all the things which they use to grease the motor and the rest of them increase. But they pay for something, like these people, if they hold you, even security come there, you just leave you. They will just punish you as they like, and you get your particulars. Dial has brought to the fore a challenge with multiple taxation. It was, uh, that's food for thought, wouldn't you say? You are watching Weekend Deal. We focus today on food security. We will take a break. When we come back, we will have a chat with our first guest. Don't go away. Food security, Nigeria has farmers. Government is providing grants at all levels. There have been improved modern equipment and technologies. So where lies the challenge? And why are we talking about food security? We have been examining rainfall, challenges with transportation. We've done market survey from Ibado. And let's talk with Dr. Rose Maxwell Gidado, the country coordinator, open forum on agricultural biotechnology in Africa, Nigerian chapter. It's great to have you join us. Thank you. Let's look at um, the high cost of food stuff. Yeah. In the last 10 years, have we recorded increase like we're talking about now in different parts of the country? Or are these rumors? Uh, they're not rumors, they are real. Uh, we've been recording high cost um, of food um, stock and it's because of scarcity. If you have enough, prices will be stabilized and it will be affordable you know, to everyone in the society, the poor, you know, the medium and the rich. But, you know, where there is not even enough, you know, most of the poor people cannot even afford. Many people go to bed hungry, I tell you. If you go to the rural areas, even within the cities, there are many households that cannot afford three square meals in a day. And, you know, once there's scarcity, of course, the prices go high. And so it's not everyone that can afford it, you know. So um, we need anything that we can do, of course, Food insecurity, um, the cause of it, of course, there are so many factors, you know, in it, so many factors come into play. There are just several. 
and it's not just one thing it's, it's not just one thing it's a combination of many things you know together before you attain that and no nation i tell you is classified as developed if that nation cannot feed herself doing some research so and food reading up about food means a lot indeed a lot indeed if you don't have enough to eat you're not developed I was reading up about uh, food security, food uh, in general, and I came to learn that Israel has food reserves for, sure. for the next 15 years. I tell you. I've never heard it before, and I that's quite you. interesting. I tell it's you. our hope that Nigeria will get to that point. Yeah, for sure. But let us... Um, and they're in the desert. In the desert. Little water. In this spite of challenges that they technology face, is because doing everyone's wonders. talking about challenges, yeah. there's nothing that happens without challenges, challenges and oftentimes sure. new ones come yeah. up. Yeah. So yeah. those challenges are surmountable. Yeah. Perhaps we can look at the fact that we have the land, we have the rainfall, we have the political will yeah. at the federal level, yeah. we have the people willing to plant. Yeah. 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 You, you you know when you have challenges. You don't allow those challenges to overwhelm you. Turn those challenges into opportunities. Give us some opportunities. And I, and I think that is what we lack in Nigeria somehow. So, um, so many opportunities are there. Opportunities for us to use technology, to use modern technology, emerging technology, make our economy knowledge base, and I think we can get there, and then invest a lot in research and development in this area you know research and development is the in thing is that is what brazil did they invested a lot in um you know the r d in the area of agriculture and today they are well food secured argentina and those countries that i'm mentioning were in the same class in with nigeria but i tell you because of the use of um innovative technologies they've gone far they've surmounted they first, they've surmounted nigeria challenges imports from argentina nigeria imports food from brazil so i can go on and on even south africa here in africa they've gone far ahead i know even you know we, the climate change we have that we're experiencing now you know it's um it's a menace anyway it's a global phenomenon it's everywhere but in africa is you know is 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 you know on the increase of what is either you're having too much rain or you're having too little and so we have to adjust we have to apply technology to that in order to mitigate those challenges is either by it adaptation, is possible it's very possible countries are using it south africa is using it and when i tell you technology what is that technology you know that can bring that change effect that change that can change the narratives you know our own narratives you know and that is the use of modern biotechnology of course in but where does greenhouse farming come in yeah, greenhouse farming is also part of the technologies of course yeah they're like good farm management practices that's the greenhouse, it's not a tool. The technology I'm talking about is a tool that you can use to effect those changes. Is it cost effective? It's, yeah, of course, uh, the starting is the government that should, the research is what takes a lot of money, but the farmer out there is not to use his money, it's the government that actually will put in money in the area of research and development so that there'll be sustainability. So, and then the farmer, is the seed that the farmer is interested in of course the farmer does not have to carry out any research the the seed goes the improved seeds the quality seeds goes to the farmer you know um having yields agriculture is all about yield harvestable yield strong yields without the yield you you, you are i mean you're you just nowhere ask you and to so hold the yield of course for depends now. on several factors okay. like seeds okay. it's in the seed Agriculture is all about having good seed. We continue that about seed, rain-fed farming, which yeah. we do in Nigeria, and lots more when we come back from Lagos. Lagos Network Center, you've gone out to do a market survey. What did you find? Please share with us. In Nigeria today, the challenges of food insecurity is of great concern, and this is as a result of neglect in food production 
caused by several factors. In spite of efforts by the present administration to boost agricultural production in Nigeria, to make Nigeria a self-sufficient nation in food production, the country is still faced with food crisis holding largely to banditry, terrorism, and of course, the farmer header conflict in so many parts of Nigeria. Inflation in Nigeria has reached a very worrisome level, currently at well over 21 percent. And this has, of course, naturally a lot of implications for poverty uh, of the people and the welfare of the people. As a result of these unfortunate challenges, many farmers have fled their farms seeking for safety elsewhere. However, the resulting effect has made prices of food stuff to soar beyond the reach of the average Nigerian. This is not an exception in Lagos State, as we paid a visit to some major markets in Lagos to know the average price of some food stuff and how affordable to the average Lagosian. The local rice came out by 12,500 naira those days, if not the best, because we have a fine Nigeria rice now. We are selling 23,000 now. The last time I bought rice, a bag of rice, it was 25,000 naira. But today, I'm buying it 28,000. About two to three years ago, the price of those beans was minimum, which was 15,000. For this 2021, it is only, that is, I can't I can just say it. Can you imagine now a price of beans now? It's 5,000 naira. So the thing is too expensive. This one is 4,500 now. Before now, 4,500 now. Before now, 3,300. Formerly, we do buy it 1,815, 1,2. But now it's say 2,000. Before, this is before 2005, 2000. Now, 15. Now, no, no, this is now one million. Now, small money. Pepe, it is held on 25,000 small baggy. Before, before. before. Okay, now, now, it is held on 24,000, 23,000. Now, ma. Timothy, 25, 24. No, we big about the case, small basket. I'm going to buy a pepper now. I don't longer have pepper of 15 naira. You have to buy pepper 100 naira now before you can eat. Any person they will say dollar, dollar has gone up. Don't know if we are using dollar to buy the local thing. We have to buy in the market here. Meanwhile, some farm produce are in season and are supposed to be cheap and affordable in the market. What could be responsible then for the high price despite massive supply? The factor of climate change. Uh, many arable lands that people normally farm and all of that, because of climate change issues, some of those farm lands are no longer arable. So we have seen cases of severe desertification across the country, especially in the northern part of the country. We have seen instances of flooding, which has destroyed many farm lands. Then there is a factor of transportation costs. Many of these agricultural products are moved on road. And the cost of transportation now is extremely high. And if you look at the situation with the exchange rate, the exchange rate depreciation, if you look at the challenges of liquidity in the foreign exchange market, that is also affecting the cost of imports. And once you have a situation where the cost of imports are increasing, naturally this will also affect the prices of food products. In spite of the challenges of food insecurity in the country, Buyers, however, are hopeful that the prices of food stuff will decline in order to ameliorate the living standards of Nigerians. At least we can say in our truth that the only thing that, doesn't, that goes up and doesn't come down is age. So Nigerians continue to be hopeful that the prices of food stuff that are on the rise, like we have heard from Ibadan and now from Lagos, will come down. But uh, I guess Dr. Rose Maxwell Guidado, the country coordinator, Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology in Africa, Nigerian chapter, has said to shape the positives we must bring to the fore R and D. For sure. Research, research and, and development. development. Tell us more. Uh, actually, research and development is the bedrock of um, every economy. You have to pump in so much money, invest. The government has to invest in that. 
the government has to work hand in hand with the agricultural research institutes and all other research institutes that are into um, agriculture, of course, that have agri as part of their mandate, agricultural improvement, improving the productivity. So if you do that, I think that is what we is lacking in Nigeria, and that is why we're not getting it right. Mm. With R&D, of course, so much. Because research is, is all about, you know, you know um, learning, you know, I mean, the science, I mean, is about learning, I mean, studying, you know, what, studying yeah. your environment. Your environment. Uh, 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 studying your environment, knowing your environment, the kind of crops, what um, maybe the farmers go through, the food crop, I mean, the, Even the crops, climate, the animals, the what, the climate and what, and then what's how do you mitigate those challenges? Because without every country has challenges. Without the research, you cannot have the answer. That is what gives you. And once you engage in, in a research, of course, a research that will give you results. You know, those outputs, once there are outputs from those R&Ds, you have gotten it right. It will be sustainable. Whatever economy comes out. But without R&D, you can't, there's no way you can, you can make it. You know, so we have is to fund those research institutes that we have under the Federal Ministry of Science and Tech and uh, Innovation. We have a lot of, I mean, so many of them. I mean, and then under the Federal Ministry of Agri, there are also so many. So, but if those um, research institutes are being taken care of, they are well funded. They are allowed to do what they should do, and the work it should be need driven. Work with, I mean, the government hand in hand. Work with the farmers. Work with the private sector. The private sector too. The industry has to come in. So, so are you saying there's no research being done? Is 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 there? But we need not to do enough. more. We need to do more. The funds are not enough. You know, I mean, that is what we go through. Of course, in I work with the National Biotechnology Development Agency, and it's also a research institute. By the time you get the funds, you don't get it at the right time. That's it. You don't get it at the right time. By the time you get it, you are not even having enough, you know. So I mean, those um, appropriations and what they don't come on time. By the time mm. you are being funded, I mean, the whole year is is already gone. But this is food, though. Empty. This is food. Yeah, this it's, is it's food. about food, of course. This is food. Yeah. If and we don't even um, eat everyone. well, you can't even do so research. So the quick wins will not help us, and that's why we keep on importing. Quick wins cannot help us. Like in Brazil, they have. Um, the Embrapa, as we have the Agricultural Research Council in Nigeria to coordinate researches and what to coordinate those research is and make sure that they do the right thing. And whatever they are doing is actually need driven. It's what you know, you have to look at um, what the farmers are facing, you know, on their farms. But Mrs. Gidado, you said we need more money for research. Yes. The one that has been provided with the research that has been done, that, that's what, what has been telling. activated so far because okay. research has so been far. done at some level okay so far there's a research uh, output that i want to tell you about now you know coming from um uh, partners i mean some government institutions and then with foreign partners and all together coming together so we have a product and that product is bt copy sampi 20 t is copy is beans is a beans that has been improved for insect control it's insect resistant there's an ex insect called maruka maruka is a butterfly and the lever of that butterfly the lever is is um a caterpillar you know it it crawls it uh, you know so that when you plant beans and it's you know it germinates and it starts forming leaves it starts forming flower this caterpillar will eat the leaves, will eat the flower, and even when it gets to forming the pots, it, it also destroys the pots. And the farmer ends up like um, maybe incurring about 80 to 90 percent loss. It happens with so many crops. Different insects, like for the cowpea, it is that maruka. And then for cotton, and you know that cotton is, a, is also another industrial crop, that it's very, you know, useful but, uh, for the test. What are viewers so, are thinking so now? Those How things, is this reduce so, the cost of food so in the market? Of course, um, with this the research you're doing, the, the research we're doing, like this one, it reduces production cost because it gives you, uh, it breaks that barrier. There is a new gene that has been brought in, and that gene makes that 
um, plant resistant, of course, to those insects. Those insects cannot destroy the beans no more. And then uh, the 80% loss is no longer there. And then uh, it improves uh, the cost of production. Of course, it's not much. You have to do, if you were doing nine sprays or 10 sprays, like in the case of the beans, you have to spray it for you to be able to control insects. And some of those chemicals are fake. You know, they don't work. So the farmer has to pray, spray many times. You know, and then the insects, sometimes they, they become resistant to it. They grow, they mutate and grow res resistant um, to yeah, those have variants uh, yeah, in, uh -huh, in the chemical and water. And so, and so but with this one, um, you are having, you are controlling, you are reducing number of sprays down to only two. You know, down to only two. That is what the farmers, the farmers have had access to those seeds. Those seeds are very good. They are climate smart. They are resilient. And then also the, the beans as well is um, resistant to striga, you know. Mm. Striga also is another menace in it. Okay. And then so Nigeria is going to have, um, you know, is going to benefit from that. A lot of money will be realized from this cowpea. Because and a lot saved uh -huh. as well. Yes. And a lot and, saved and then, as well. Because last year some farmers planted and there was early cessation of rain. The local beans, of course, did not pot, but okay. this one pot it, and they had high yields. Interesting. You know, a farmer has given a testimony that he planted just on a hectare of land, and he realized so much. He planted the, the same with his own, and his own he got two mod, four modus, and the BT he got like twenty four modus. Hmm. So that's quite a, quite a, a lot. Of that's course. very encouraging. So because but we, we need run, more. Nigeria runs a deficit of five hundred thousand metric tons of of that, and we import. We make it all by importing. So, and that import is a lot of money. So you're saving costs. You're you then earning a foreign exchange and, and all those things, of course, by doing it. So by having a beans that can resist that um, insect mm. that causes farmers to lose like 80, 90 percent, you know. We're taking a step we're forward. That, we're taking but a we step. want to take So we already steps have forward. two products. We have the cotton okay. and then we have... Um, the beans. You so tell this, us more about is, that. These you are just, and then we, we should have many more you of tell our us more indigenous about that. crops. Yes, yes. We'll talk more about that. We're not wrapping up the interview now. We're only going to learn more about uh, if people are still farming in Abelkota, and that's where NT Abelkota comes in. Tell us, are people still farming in Ogun State? Food is one of the basic needs of life. Meanwhile, the state of food security in Nigeria is becoming worrisome and heartbreaking in spite of government's efforts at achieving food sufficiency for the nation. It is important to state that Ogun State is not exempted from harrowing experience of food crisis largely occasioned by insecurity and incessant farmers' headers clashes in agrarian areas of the state. The situation has forced many farmers out of the farm and also affected the prices of food items and commodities in the market. When you buy market today, by tomorrow, the money will increase the farmer that are not producing or something to that nature. And for instance, beans that are buying like 20,000 naira for before, recently we are buying this bag of beans 65,000 naira. The local rice government is talking about. We are not the for our country Nigeria. The little one you can produce is not enough for people to eat. For instance, we are buying the foreign rice twenty thousand naira. Then the local rice which are producing our own land, we are buying it twenty four thousand naira, which is not supposed. If they go up, they come down. But as for now, now up they. No new market now they down. Even the Nigeria own self, you know, if you see himself, take us up to sell it now. If you say they see that Nigeria item sell, it's still better. See Oruro, Banjo own, they are selling to 3,000 plus. Why they are saying they want to not come out uh, something inside? They said that one to 6,000 naira. Okay, it's 6,000 naira. Why in a Nigeria item? But they are cost, 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 they go. Uh, boy, I think it is 4,500. But now it is 5,400. Even the beans that we used to buy 900 before, it's now 1,100. The, the Boko Haram, they keep farmers anyhow. So uh, farmers are now, they are afraid to go to the farm. I think that is what is responsible for this. 
there is increase the thing is not getting any longer funny because the last market day i i priced some more they told me the price is four thousand five hundred this market day they said it's four thousand seven hundred every market day i discovered that things are increasing However, it is heartwarming to note that Ogun State Government is not resting on its hogs to encourage and ensure all year round farming. Provision of grants to farmers through the CBN's Anchor Borers Program and distribution of high yield seedling varieties to farmers are efforts in this regard. The governor already registered 70,000 youths that are ready to key into any uh, agro. Uh, project opportunity. Open state use, we, 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 they are always uh, uh, ready. We have small farmers, people who have already signed a job portal for uh, agricultural value chain opportunity. The first game is job for the youth. The second one, food security. The third one, nutrition security. The fourth one, industry. Industries, because they are not going to be closing shop because of raw materials and they will have their products roll onto the market. If Nigeria would ever achieve food sufficiency, the ravaging insecurity in the nation needs to be nipped in the board, while modern methods of cattle rearing should be adopted as a national emergency program. Thank you, Ntia Belkuta. We are further enlightened as we continue our conversation. Some believe that we import, we export, yet some say we don't have enough. How does that work? Is it necessary to, to um, export? And must we continue to import? Can we stop? Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's actually not good for us to be importing. Rather, it's better to export. Because if we don't export at all, you know, the foreign exchange is earned when you're exporting. And then uh, nearer to, um, of course, it stands the chance of, you know, being not, I mean, uh, being of better value than what it is now. If we don't export at all, it's, it's, it will be bad for our country. We need, something needs to be going out for us to earn that foreign exchange and what, and then our nearer value, of course, will be higher a little. Uh, and then importing, importing actually takes a lot of our money, of course. So I, I think I, I discourage that importing, and I'm sure one reason why people import, they prefer to import from those countries is because sometimes they say buying from here is more expensive. It costs more because we don't have um, a lot, we don't have much. And so they prefer to import that is cheaper for them, especially uh, the poultry industries. Most of them import meats from Brazil, Argentina, and all those countries, and they will tell you it's cheaper. And it's because uh, here in Nigeria, why our food um, items, producers are, are, you know, the prices are high, fluctuating, fluctuating and what, and, you know, escalating, is actually because of production costs. If I have to spray 10 times, 11 12, up to maybe 15 times, I have to spray. It's money I'm spending on that, of course. And then fertilizer, if I have to buy a bag of fertilizer, you know, for a very high price, maybe some in some places, I think they hold, some people hold the fertilizer. And then the farmers, the peasant farmers that need it, by the time they get it, it's either five or six thousand. Some even could be as high as ten thousand. The so problems if, have if been I'm enumerated. Going to, if I'm, if Solutions. I, if, yeah. How can we provide them? Because countries have surmounted immense challenges. So we should, yeah, we should reduce the imports. We should try as much as possible to improve our seeds, of course. Because once you have an improved seed, you don't need to use a lot of farm inputs. So these are parts. Technology is actually part of the solution. The, the use of technology, whatever, there, there are so many different types of technologies that can be used to, to reduce this production cost. Once you reduce the production cost, that's it. You're going to have a lot. And then if I can, in a, on a small um, plot of land, if I have an improved seed and I plant the seed, the yield I'm going to have is going to be marvelous. I can even plant maize at, at my backyard and then harvest so much. 
so that's what the, Nigerians so have is, been advised of, to do. Of course, that's what, that's what we're being advised to do. And then even the, the green um, house um, uh, agriculture, farming. farming green vegetables, yeah, that is a good farm managing practice because if you're farming vegetables in, in, a, in a greenhouse, of course, you will see insects inside. And so you're going to have quality, you know, good, you know, very fresh vegetables and vegetables that are not sprayed with chemicals and what do you, so so the quality and what goes high even though um because before you erect a greenhouse you have to spend a lot of money maybe about 1.5 million but the piece of farmer does not have something like mm. that anyway most of them don't go into vegetable farm they go into cereals uh, staple crops and what and then even the staple crops they are in the open field and so they are so part of the solution technology is part of the solution and then we have so many the satellite imagery digital you know uh, technology and what the digital farming the world and then uh, we have to also avoid this anything that can cause greenhouse gas effect okay. there are many things that is difficult to stop urbanization and then all these um industrialization data because the population is on the high going growing geometrically we're over 200 million and what we're growing and so we're growing so many people um need houses and then many are industrialized and even the agricultural activity of course soil tillage is is part of the problem so if we can maybe develop crops that are resistant that can tolerate herbicide that are drought tolerant in the case of uh, climate change mm. with little rain you are able to have a uh, distinct and then you can also plant in those areas where they don't have much rain at all maybe Thank two you. months rain and then once you have a climate smart a uh, seed a seed that is climate smart you are, you are, you are good to go you are good so to these go are some of the problems There's and when no the farmers are good mm -hmm. to go nigerians yes. are good to and then, go um, access to loans and all those things. Credit because facilities. Credit facilities. Access to those credit fa facilities is very, very important because without that, we, if you have it, at least you'll be able to afford the some of those farm inputs and all those modern things. equipment modern, and modern technologies. Equipment, uh, mechanization. Of course, it's use of tractors and what. Because uh, most of our farmers are aging. And then we have to make agriculture attractive to the youth. To the you know the teaming population, the youth are coming up. Most of them have to go into the, credit the white collar coming. jobs are not even paying. You know, but even if I'm a civil servant, I think I'm encouraged. The government encourages you to go into agriculture as well. To have you can do that. If less less um, we need to encourage more farm, youth. Uh -huh. So eat what we grow and then farm what you eat. I think that's interesting. You know? Eat what you grow, farm what, what you, you eat. eat. So, we want to thank you. Yeah. It's on that note we'll wrap up our chat. Dr. Rose Maxwell Gidado, Country Coordinator, Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology in Africa, Nigeria chapter. Thank, thank you. you. Nigerians are listening. I'll take one last message from Lawrence Aondaka from Benue State. It says many factors attribute to food insecurity but the major one is the farmers headers crisis if this issue is tackled it will greatly address the challenges of food insecurity in nigeria yes there are challenges but they can be surmounted other countries have done it nigeria too can do it we continue our conversation tomorrow on weekend deal please join us then have a great day and continue to enjoy our programs on the nta have a good day bye-bye